Welcome back to Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm John White. With me today is Virginia Podmanic, and Virginia is a master gardener here in Doniana County. Virginia, happy holidays. Happy holidays to you too, John. Looks like you brought quite a colorful basket here with you. Well, I brought some uh, dried flowers that I've collected from my garden. Um, I like to use them in arrangements over the winter when the real ones, the fresh ones, aren't available. Um, I thought maybe we could talk about the plants and how they grow. First I brought was the uh, Mexican sage, which um, still has the smell of sage. Oh, yeah. And uh, it does fill the house nicely, and it has a pretty purple flower. The salvia uh, lucantha has a um, gorgeous flower on it. It's grown quite popular, easy to find in the nurseries, and uh, can get quite tall. can put yeah. quite a bit of growth on it, so it can get pretty lanky. It uh, grows well in full sun location as well as a partial partial shade. The flower, of course, is much better in the full sun location. requires a little bit extra water, but it is a excellent plant. It gets kind of woody after a while. Sometimes it needs to be, uh, you know, it'll frost back and it'll right. uh, come back out the next year, but it is a, a great plant. It's used a lot, so it's a beautiful, colorful plant. Ours is about six seven feet tall and it dries back to nothing and you wonder how it's going to come up but it does it every year. I brought some Lunaria, um, penny plant. It's a biannual. It's a, it's just a small flower the first year. You have to wait for the second year to get these uh, flat paper cases. But it looks nice in arrangements too. Well, this is the seed pot on it and uh, this plant is another one that does quite well in the area. Um, in the southern part of the state, we have very intense sunlight. So a lot of times having plants that are in um, a little bit less full exposure situation, right. the plants actually do better because they still get a good amount of sunlight and yet they get a little protection from the real hot part of the day. So uh, the plants do great. Uh, these will last you know, basically forever and uh, these are the seed pot again, and as you put them up against light, you can see the seeds showing through them, so they're, they're quite attractive right. for, for several different reasons. So, again, another good plant to grow. Right. If you, in the packet, like you say, it does say full sun, but I grow it in complete shade, and it does extremely well. I have a little cluster of uh, lavender that I've picked from my garden. Again, something else that uh, smells wonderful and looks nice in a little pot. Now, the lavenders have gained quite a bit of popularity with all the aromatherapy and different interest in that end of it, but it is a uh, Mediterranean plant that uh, should do well in, in our part of the world, very similar type uh, climate. And there's a lot of different uh, lavenders that are grown and uh, have seen some, some gardens where they have several of the different lavenders in them, but they are you know, very, very fragrant and give you a, a good long-lasting bloom. So mm -hmm. uh, they are a plant that um, should be grown in some of our gardens and, and uh, good plants. They don't plant. take much water, do they? No, don't take much water. You can actually kill them maybe with, with too much water. Right. Um, a few pomegranates. Some people eat them. I like to just dry them. You know, the pomegranates are, are uh, great because the... One, they do produce an edible fruit. The plant is a very good plant. It can grow into quite a large shrub. Um, has the beautiful red flowers on it. It's a very um, good plant because it's tolerant of very, you know, salty conditions mm -hmm. and can take a lot of abuse and yet produces a very pretty uh, flower on it. And then the pomegranates themselves uh, make nice dried uh, fruit arrangements. Uh, so. Uh, these are good examples, so you can keep those and keep reusing them. I have the uh, artichoke pods, which dry beautifully okay. for floral arrangements. The uh, globe artichoke, uh, which this comes from, has a beautiful flower on it, you know, thistle-like flower with the kind of bluish, uh, purplish flower on it, and then these are the seeds that you can pull out, but it uh, does make an excellent dried uh, flower arrangement piece, so uh, those are great to use. Um, I have the twigs of the red dogwood. They leave the stems turn beautiful shade of red over the winter, and they're wonderful used mm -hmm. in 
decorations. Now the red twig dogwood, uh, I know I've seen it used a lot more up north than it has so much down south here, but it's a uh, plant that, um, as you said, is much more colorful in its dormant state with the, mm -hmm. with the red twigs on it. And uh, this plant would probably be happier in our situation in a east or a north type exposure, so it's a little bit more protected. Uh, it probably will require a little bit more water, but uh, this is a, a good plant also to use for, for its color. And last, we have some Cyprophilia, which is nice and floral arrangements year round, really. Okay. Well, Gypsophilia is another one that's uh, easy to grow, doesn't require much care, and, and gives you quite a spectacular uh, flower and seed head production on it. Mm -hmm. So good for flower arrangements. So, well, Virginia, thank you very much for sharing part of your garden with us mm -hmm. today. My pleasure. Thank you.